Parliamentary Representative for St. John visits site of Hubble Bridge collapse. We'd have to remove, uh, excavate the old bridge because you see there's a tendency for people to pass under it still. Mm -hmm. So, and it is a hazard right here. This story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I'm Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. One of the oldest bridges in St. John, Hubble Bridge, collapsed on Monday evening and has resulted in residents having to find an alternative route to go about their business. The bridge has been closed to vehicular traffic for some time. Kevin Frederick reports. 60 years ago, Hubble Bridge was constructed to connect Guav Estate with the town of Guav. Of course, it serves as a main access point for persons going to the St. John's RC School as well as St. Rose Modern Secondary School. Much so, the bridge also connects people to industry. However, unfortunately, it has collapsed and government is moving speedily to ensure that something is done within the quickest possible time. Alvin Dabu, the parliamentary representative for St. John, who revisited the area for a second time since the bridge fell, told the government information service his heart goes out to the community. As I just see Miss uh, Fullerton trying to cross, uh, cross the water there and people like her and all the young children that have to go to school. It's very inconvenient and uh, my heart goes out to them. But what we have to do, and if, first of all, what we want to do is we'd have to remove, uh, excavate the old bridge because you see there's a tendency for people to pass under it still. Mm -hmm. So, and it is a hazard right here. So that's the first order of business to remove that. And then right now we have, uh, with the aid of CCC, we're looking at putting in a temporary bridge over it for pedestrians only, so the children and the people could use. And that, uh, up there, hoping that we could have that done within one week's time. Mr. Dabu, who undertook several infrastructural projects since being elected into office, said the collapse of the bridge is ironic since it was marked for reconstruction. The tenders were supposed to be awarded in two weeks' time, mm -hmm. so they would start uh, construction. And I know they had already spoken to to the Alexis there for uh, to put a temporary access mm -hmm. and uh, that negotiation was done. Everything is uh, is there. It's just so unfortunate that the bridge decided that they would uh, would go at this point in time before we would have ready to start because we were hoping to at least start construction before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But we did go now as I say we'll put the temporary bridge up and then the real project would start. On Tuesday morning, top government and the public officials held an emergency meeting to discuss the issue which, according to Mr. Dabro, was fruitful. The Prime Minister met uh, with the Permanent Secretary in Finance and uh, also with the Minister of Works. And they came up with that uh, emergency plan so that we could deal with uh, getting that temporary bridge up. And also, the Attorney General is very instrumental in uh, negotiating that for us. And CCC, as they were here earlier on, has agreed to work with us on that. So I'm very appreciative for all the help that has been done so far in trying to alleviate that problem and make it comfortable for the, you know, the people that use it as quickly as possible. Reporting live from Hubble Bridge at Guav in St. John, I am Kevin Frederick for the National Report. Political opposition forces in Grenada have been getting some advice from an unlikely source. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell said it would be in the best interest of the opposition to stop condemning everything that the government does. The Grenadian leader says the opposition is shooting itself in the foot by practicing a bad strategy. Dr. Mitchell was speaking to journalists in a special interview highlighting his administration's midterm in office. In my view, um I can't be the person to give them advice. I, I, I don't believe they are helping their case by their approach to opposition type politics. Um, you cannot be seen as condemning everything the government attempts to do. A good opposition, and you remember when I, when I was in opposition, sometimes I went and read and compliment the government when I felt they did something good. Because the point I was really making, if I want to be an effective opposition, if I compliment what everyone sees as good, 
when I when I turn the table and and criticize, I will be much more effective. The full interview will be broadcast Tuesday night, September twenty second, from eight o'clock on all radio and television stations. This is the National Report. We will be right back. Prepare for hurricane. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof. Flashlight candles will do things. Stuff garbage back. First aid kit. Come on, people. Make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. The National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa, will now be able to better save time, infrastructure and water as it goes about leak detection in a more effective manner. Janel Hamlet reports. The authority recently acquired three state-of-the-art water leak detectors through the courtesy of the German Agency for International Cooperation, GIZ, as part of its strategy to reduce water loss and to carry out swifter leak repairs. A three-hour in-house training in the use and benefits of the devices was hosted on Tuesday. Because leak detection more or less would put a direct spot as to where a leak might occur, you have less um, excavations, right? And um, through that, it minimizes the cost of repair. No longer you would have to go and be searching or excavating all over to find a leak. No, you can just zero in using modern technology. Head of the GIZ, Dieter Rothenberger, who has been collaborating with NAWASA in a number of initiatives, says his organization's aim is not only to introduce staff to the new equipment, but to shed new light on the concept of leak detection. We are supporting NAWASA with the equipment, but we are also supporting NAWASA uh, with uh, thinking on the institutional side, what needs to be done to actually uh, even further improve the process of water, uh, water leak detection. The exercise, which will be followed by on-site application, is being facilitated by German water leak detection specialist Michael Kirsting. For the National Report, I am Janelle Hamlet. And that is the National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall.